Aaron Wan Bisaka is making crazy demands before he can leave Manchester United to join West Ham. This is why his move to West Ham is stalling. Welcome to the United Old Sport. My name is Webb. Guys, if you do recall the song, Mane, 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 Mane. <laughs> That's the issue going on. Aaron Wan Bisaka is demanding for a massive payout for him to sign the contract to leave Manchester United and join West Ham. That's the reason that Man United already agreed a fee with West Ham United, about 18 million pounds. That's what West Ham is supposed to pay for one Bisaka. But Bisaka is refusing to leave. Why? I'm here to give you the details. Like this video, share it, and of course, subscribe. You can drop a comment as well and let me know what you think. Now, here's the thing. We know that Aaron Wan Bisaka's contract will run out in the summer of 2025. 2024-2025 uh, season he should be his last at Man United. Now, if Wan Bissaka runs out, runs down his contract at Manchester United, and he leaves for free, he will be uh, able to get a sign-on bonus, if you would call it that, for, to join any team he would want to join after that. Now, what he's saying that if Manchester United want to let go of him, they want to lose him now. They don't want to lose him for free. They need to give him a significant chunk of the amount they negotiate for him. So if West Ham United pays 18 million pounds for him, he wants a significant amount of that, chunk of that, to go to him as an individual. Now, these are these smart agents of today. They are trying to, to, to milk every dime they can out of the situation. So he's saying, you give me a significant chunk of that amount because in any case, you're forcing me out of the club. Me, I was comfortable staying, running down my contract, and live for free. Because when I live for free, I gain comes for me will pay me the bonus you see the way it is with uh, adrian rabio now he left he went us for free so any club that comes to sign him will give give him a sign on bonus directly to himself going for, to him so one bisaka is saying if man united sells me to west ham now they are denying me an opportunity to get a sign on bonus in one year or even in less than a year when his contract runs out so he's saying i would rather stay here and if you don't have to play me let me be on the bench it's okay I will earn my 90,000 pounds per week. But if you want to let go of me, you need to give me a significant chunk of the amount of money that you get from my, from my sale. Now, it's a tricky situation, isn't it? It's, it's, a quite, it's quite a tricky one because you think about it and you're saying, okay, first of all, Man United is desperate for money. Every penny that they will make from the sale of Van Bissaka should be paid to Bayern Munich to be able to sign Nusail Mazraoui. Now, if... And it is reported that he wants actually double figures. Perhaps the bigger amount of it, of the 18 million quid, is what he would want for himself. Now, if you think about it that way, I mean, you're saying, then what's, what's, the, what's the, the whole point? Because the plan was sell him and get all the, the money that you get from his sale and uh, pay, pay it to Bayern. But if then you have to sell him and give him most of the money, then it was as good as not selling him. You keep him around, he lives for free, and, uh, you know, you, you, you start figuring out where else to get, to get the money to buy a replacement. So that's uh, the tricky situation that Ineos are finding themselves in. Guys, this is what I've, I've been telling you, that the biggest problem that Ineos is going to suffer is the nature of contracts most of these players signed with Manchester United. Probably there is a clause somewhere in his contract where he cannot leave, you know, just like that. Unless perhaps he has failed to play a certain number of games. And you see, if you think about it, with the Aaron Wan Bissaka, there are people who will feel like he's being pushed out. Because honestly, whereas he was not the best player, he, he's not really, he wasn't the, the worst Man United player of all, honestly. And he sees it, he knows it. Because uh, you think about it, there are players who have not contributed at all. Wan Bissaka, there are people up to now who feel saying, who don't support him being sold. I know so many people like that. I also wouldn't be. Uh, so mad if Wan Bissaka stayed at Man United. He is not the worst of players from the, from the last season. I know that he was one of our best players until he got injured. When he got injured, his levels took time to get back up again. Yet Diogo Dalo was improving day, day and night. Now, uh, for, for, for him to be pushed out like this, I think as a player and his agent, they sat down and they, were, they felt, you know, we, can go, we, 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 we can't go down without a fight. Let's fight. For a penny, because anyway, in any case, if they want us out, I mean, uh, if whether we stay or, or no, I mean, it's, it's, their, it's their win. 
if we just leave, they are the ones winning. They are getting what they want, and we are going to move on and suffer, play for a West Ham, which he probably does not want to play for in the first place. That's the reality. Wan Bisaka did not want to play for West Ham. Probably when he joined for nearly 50 million from Crystal Palace a few seasons ago, he didn't dream that he would go back to London at West Ham United. So, right now it's not the ideal because even reports that came suggest that, that he would have preferred, uh, preferred to join Inter Milan. Probably if it were Inter Milan that was coming for him, he wouldn't have put, uh, you know, uh, 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 made, made that, uh, 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 that, that, uh, that claim that he wants some, uh, a significant chunk of his uh, sell-on fee. So, it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky situation, but it go, takes you back to one thing. Ineos needed to bring in all these experts around that you see to be able to avoid negotiating such crazy contracts with players. One of the things that, um, that, shook, that shocked the life out of, uh, of Sajim Ratcliffe was the nature of contracts these players were having vis-a-vis -vis their age and the club. Because if you're Manchester United, you can't be uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, negotiating contracts as if you're a Saudi club trying to appease players to join you. So this is a big issue. And we see now we are stuck with players because of small little, you know, intricacies. And you see, if you're dealing with the players alone, it's easy for you to convince them. But these agents today, they don't just allow, because in, at the end of the day, they want to lose their business anyway. They have to earn. I know the a story of Sergio Berahino, who was, uh, whose contract was terminated, and he had, uh, his agent took him to court, and he had to pay him 250,000 pounds. So these agents, uh, agents don't lose their money. They don't, they don't, they can't accept it. So it's a, it's a, it's a tricky situation that we find ourselves in and it's dragging every process that we are trying to do. So we are in a situation where we've got to sell players to buy, but even when you want to sell the players to get the money to buy, they're giving you conditions where even if you sold them, it wouldn't make sense. So what do you do? Do we just sacrifice? At least we've done little business, sacrifice whatever we have and accept to lose players for free. But then if you just keep losing players for free like that, how are you going to buy others? Are you there? Are we then just going to focus on the academy? By the way, Man United might be cornered into a situation where they just trust the youngsters, promote youngsters from the academy and play them. Because they, they might fail to get the money to buy players, to, to buy more players. So just uh, stay with what you have until they, you ra they run down their contracts. For those you don't want, they leave for free. They go make their money. And then you, you start rebuilding with the youngsters, sell a few, get money, you add more experienced players to add onto, onto them. So it's a, a tricky situation that we find ourselves in. And this still is dragging new signings for Manchester United. What are we supposed to do? Just drop down your comment and let me know what you think. But I wanted to give you a proper explanation of why this, the, the move for Aaron Wan Bissaka to West Ham United is stalling. That's the issue. He's earning £90,000 per week. But he's saying, I would rather stay and my 90,000 quid per week, even if I'm not, I'm not playing, run down my contract, live for free, get my sign-on fee, sign-on bonus, whatever club I choose to join, even if it's Saudi. Yeah? But if you just force me, you just sell me out to West Ham United and you don't give me a penny of the money, West Ham probably will not even be able to meet his 90,000 pounds per week that he's earning now. He's saying, I cannot win. And you think about it and you're saying, even if it were me, I would look out for myself. I mean, these footballers have short careers. You need to match man as you can for as long as you can still stand on your feet and run and play football. So, guys, that's the painful situation we are in with Aaron Wan Bissaka. But perhaps a solution will be found sooner rather than later. My name is Webb. I'll be back later with more Transfer Talk and, of course, all Manchester United news. Stick with us.